So, good morning, everybody. It's Jillian up early. Saw my husband off and to go fishing. And, of course, I'm studying. Um, I like to study. I like to learn. I like to read about new things. I like to put things together, um, at least intellectually. And so, this morning, I woke up with a thought in my mind that something was telling me in my sleep how hard it is to become a whole person. It is very painful to become a whole person. And I'm just, and I'm, I'm, and I was thinking about the Code of Hammurabi, the Rosicrucians, the Georgia Guidestones, the Ten Commandments, the Bible, all the different religions in the world. And then, of course, all the, the religious wars over there in the Gaza Strip. And I'm just like, oh, I'm putting it all together here. And it's it's quite fascinating when you think when you put all the, the the political and foreign affairs over there in the Middle East and Gaza Strip. And then you put together the Freemasons and Rosicrucians, the Illuminati conspiracies. And then you have the Georgia Guidestones. And then, of course, the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. And then, of course, all these viruses that are just viruses. But, yes, they are very strong. But people aren't whole people. And so these viruses attempt to upgrade and people don't have what it takes to upgrade. And it's painful. And so what have we been taught to do is take antibiotics all the time. Well, where did this come from? Why did I even go and Google the code of Hammurabi? Because that's like, that's so out of left field. I mean, I don't have enough knowledge about religion for me to go and be like, oh, I'm going to go research the Code of Hammurabi and then realize that it's actually part of Yale Law because those are the first set of laws ever in the world that we know about. And why I looked it up, because I want to know when medicine was first coined. When did medicine become something that was used on the population to, yeah, not only control people, but to also keep order, but to give people relative peace, Okay. Well, because, you know, when you're Googling <laughs> where did medicine first come, there came Hammurabi, the, 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 the laws of Hammurabi. And there was like nine laws out of there that were for physicians. And that's, that's why I posted all that stuff, because that is actually the beginning of religion. I mean, the Code of Hammurabi and all the laws back in Babylon probably was the springboard for the Ten Commandments. Moses, when you think about it, I know so many people are just going all the way back to like Genesis and maybe the Old Testament and then the New Testament and that's where it stops and then and then we hear about, oh, the, 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 the Sumerian pan thing, which I've talked about with the gods called, what is it? Um, the Sumerian pantheon, Anu or An, Enlil, Anki, Ninkurzog, Nana. Well, where do we hear that from? Well, it was from the Code of Hammurabi. Hammurabi talked about those Sumerian gods that first, I guess, developed mankind. Now, were they really gods or just people that came from another place that seeded our planet and then edified us and then also were deified at the same time? And then with all the different tribes the Amorites, the Akkadians, and all of that, and they all splintered off into their different sects. Then you have all the different religions, Judaism, Christianity, and then, of course, all the newer religions, like within the last couple hundred years. Okay, so if you've just taken on Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness, they're really new religions. They're not really that old. They don't have a real substantial mark in history. And so then you realize how much mankind has been manipulated into so many offshoots of religion. But when you trace it all back to even what Yale teaches in their law school, you learn about the first set of laws. That's the code of Hammurabi. Now, we can all quibble on years, oh, were they a thousand years before the, the Moses and the Ten Commandments? Everyone can play that game of, oh no, who came first? Was it the Code of Hammurabi or was it Ten Commandments? No, the Hammurabi came first because the Sumerian pantheon was out of Mesopotamia, okay? That's part of one of the six cradles of civilization. 
And yeah, you have the Chinese, um, all you know, because they've been around for a long time too. And you have the, you know, the Indus Valley, India, and they have all their gods and all of their laws and all of that. But there is a common theme that seems to weave them all together and keep them all together, and that is the the medicine laws, the antibiotic usage, the war on humans to keep them under control and have some kind of order of our society. And so, and so when I'm thinking about becoming a whole person and I realize how much pain I went through the last three weeks, becoming a whole person, dealing with predisposed issues that were reacted to with antibiotics in my childhood as a baby. And then I see what humans today have to deal with. Oh my gosh. It's going to be painful for many people and not many people will, will go through that path, that, that process. Many people won't. And so I need to look at that reality. <clears throat> and so then I think of the Georgia Guidestones and the set of laws that were taken after not only the 10 commandments, but then the code of Hammurabi. And you know that they're trying to now finally weed out all the fractions of potentials out there, the people who are not a whole person that are glitching, they're trying to weed them out without going back to some of the horrible things we know about history. And I completely understand that. And so you can't get mad at Rockefeller medicine. You can't get mad at any of the biotech because they're just one generation out of like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that have used esoteric knowledge from, yes, the Code of Hammurabi. And so let me just read this. Like the Georgia Guidestones, you know the Rosicrucians. And Rosicrucians is Jewish mysticism, Hermeticism, and Christian Gnosticism, okay? And so you know the Rosicrucians developed the Georgia Guidestones as they were taken out for the Code of Hammurabi and even the Ten Commandments. So I would even imagine that the, the Rosicrucians all developed the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, thousands of years ago. And then, it, and then each time the Bible gets revised based upon the time, just like the Constitution is going to be, was revised by with all the Articles of Confederation and all the amendments. Okay, no different. And that's where the, 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 the Constitution derived from was the Code of Hammurabi. It was a constitutional law back, way back six, seven thousand years ago. And so, you know, the Rosicrucians developed the Georgia Guidestones as they were taken after the Code of Hammurabi and even the Ten Commandments. The Rosicrucian Order, pejoratively known as the Illuminati and also known as the Freemasons, is made up of Christian Gnosticism, Jewish mysticism, and Hermeticism. And the Hermeticism is the Greek mythology. It is the Greek system. It is the medicine system. Jewish mysticism, you know, it's all the... This, the you know, the numerology and all of that esoteric knowledge. And then Christian Gnosticism, well, you know, Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all of that stuff, the Catholic Church. Okay, and so you see then what this world is made up of. And then where does the Muslim Islam, well, that's all part of the, the it's all still part of the Rosicrucian. Because Hermeticism is part of the Islamic culture because it came out of Mesopotamia. They were the first ones that did all that. They were cutting people's tumors out and all that stuff, cutting people's things out. There, there's laws even for the physicians way back in antiquity. Okay? And so it's actually assumed that the Islamic religion is also part of the Rosicrucian order. Though we have seen such a split and such a compartmentalization that people don't even want to think about that in the West because of all the wars that we have been waged you know, and all the things that may have been done to us by people in the Middle East and vice versa. And then you have stuff going on in Israel. And so right now we're in such a convoluted clusterfuck that you, it's, it's very hard for a person to really just think about really who was, who, who were the original civilizations and what were their contributions as far as the laws and control and order from chaos. And, 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 and we still cannot discount China. China has been around for fucking thousands and thousands, thousands of years, probably just as old as, as the Code of Hammurabi, if not older. 
And so that's probably why also China is a huge force. The billions of people, just like India, billions of people. All right. Africa, a billion people. And then you have the West. You have the West, the Europeans, Australians, Canadians, Americans, the UK. This is probably altogether a billion people. So, who came first, Moses or Hammurabi, right? That's what I, I don't even know why I asked that question. I'm just thinking, I, <clears throat> I was thinking like, oh, the Ten Commandments. So I said, that, okay, the Ten Commandments or Moses or whatever, Genesis and Hammurabi, and then that, that's what came up. So, the Code of Hammurabi is roughly 1,000 years older than the Ten Commandments of Laws of Moses, which were written in 1500 BC and considered the oldest set of laws in existence. So the Code of Hammurabi is roughly 1,000 years older than the Ten Commandments, the Laws of Moses, which were written in 1500 BC and is considered the oldest set of laws in existence. So you know that that's not only, I mean, I just went as far back as the Ten Commandments to figure out where our laws were derived from, but it's even further than the Ten Commandments. See, that's why I was not, I was disenchanted with religion in my childhood because, first of all, it was a dictatorship. Like I said in my little post that, well, she said that we're in a dictatorship. This is not a democracy. And then turn around and say, well, you need to now vote because you're in a democracy. And I'm like, and so, you know, children who are trying to figure out uh, some kind of order and pattern and you see inconsistencies and hypocrisies. Then you start, then you can't take the people that are raising you who are living in misalignment seriously. And then you, yeah, you do rebel. And so that's what's going on right now in our society. We have a bunch of children who are seeing the misalignment in the messages being sent and they're rebelling. Okay. So it's perfectly understandable why there's so many activists. Now you have to understand what the misalignment is. And instead of rebelling, you intellectually articulate your point of view instead of demonizing you appeal to people's intellect you appeal to their logic they people do have logic they just don't have all the information and that's what the issue is in a lot of families and relationships and whatever is people are working from half information or hardly any information and they're working from assumptions and so it took me many years to finally intellectually be almost my mother's equal if she would even acknowledge that. She'll never acknowledge me as being her intellectual equal, no. But I have spent many years figuring out how to intellectually beat her at an argument. And now I have, but now I've cut it off because there's no reason for us to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, wit for weight. There's no point now. I hope she's still around. I hope she's still alive. She probably is. Maybe she's not. I don't know. And so, so who came for us, right? So the Code of Hammurabi and Moses Davies, www.amazon.com. So maybe that's why so much strife in the Gaza, because maybe the, the, the Jewish people don't want to acknowledge that, yes, the, 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 um, not only Palestine, but, you know, there is some credibility to the Islamic religion and the Muslim religion, but we also need to graduate beyond the eye for the eye, the really um, aggressive justice system, as well as keeping, I don't know, the, the limitations of certain genders. There, there is, like, we can, we can acknowledge the past and say, okay, we came from this, this world, and not only Mesopotamia, but also there's, you know, the China and, and, and Europe and all of that, but we now need to graduate and move beyond the archaic ways of doing stuff. The old, that's the old world. And that's what the new world order is trying to say is that we don't need to go back to the biblical times all the time. Though we have so many people going back to biblical times all the time, you get going back to their scripture, going back to their religion, going back to like 5,000 years ago, living in the past and not even looking at the future. And their only future is their children who are still living in the past because no one has changed in that family. And so this is where now the rubber meets the road and the whole JJ meta mentality is completely in alignment with the new world order. Though we're not trying to destroy people, but we know that 
that for you to earn your way into the new world, you have to become a whole person because these frequencies are going to force you to either deal and ride out the pain and feed yourself and lengthen your telomeres or take vast amounts of antibiotics, which were used way back when to control populations and then destroy yourself that way. And you don't have to lift a you don't have to push a button, lift a knife, you know, lift a gun or whatever. You don't have to rage any war on any, on any culture. All you have to do is figure out <clears throat> who the strong are by raising frequencies, by changing the atmosphere, and then people's diseases come to surface, and and then also the diseases in the animals because when you have high heat, you have high frequency. You also have massive amounts of replication and then mutations in the genome and then of course people get infected and they have to deal with that infection okay and so it's not just oh the new world order is just saving this type of people or that no if you have gen if you have it genetically the predisposed strength to take in new information to control yourself in your in all of your hormones if you have the 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 um the strength to deal with the pain and to adapt to the changing climate the changing economic times you could be black white mexican hispanic chinese japanese korean whatever and you would be part of the rainbow of diversity that can withstand the changes in the environment and still be a peaceful, productive, intellectual member of society who isn't consuming exponentially. And so that's why now finally they have perfected a way to keep the strong and wash away the weak without completely destroying all of mankind. And so even the flood way back in the Noah days probably didn't flood everywhere. It flooded a lot of different places, but not everywhere. Or there'd be no mankind left. We'd all be drowned. Right? I mean, how long can you live on a whole planet of water if there is no vegetation? You need vegetation in order to live, in order to feed animals and to keep humans alive. So there were parts of the earth that, that weren't flooded, but there were other parts of the earth that were completely flooded. And I'm sure even back in antiquity, there were giants. When did we become these size humans? I couldn't tell you. That's the esoteric knowledge. And when that, well, we saw residual giants back in the 1800s. We even see still some giants today, like the basketball players. Some genetic lines have giant people. But to us, the giant people are like maybe seven foot, eight foot. But when you think about maybe a couple hundred, 200, 300, 400, 500 years ago, there were giants that were, there were people that were taller than eight or foot or nine foot. But why could they not, why could they not survive? Well, when you think about how painful it is to keep growing and growing and growing, what would have taken, you know, well, I don't want to speculate too much of when we've, we've changed the genome to be from giants to now this average size human. But I would say, yeah, that, that, that it took many years of evolution and genetic um, genetic splicing and dicing to then have the humans that we have today. They probably, or, or they killed off all the giants and then the humans, the hominids that were a certain size were then used as prototypes to then be genetically modified and become the humans we are today. So I could see where that came from. That, yeah, that maybe that it is right that we did come from a certain kind of hominid that came from the monkeys. And that's, and that's why humans are the size that we are and why we're not the giants. And maybe the gods were the giants. And are they flying around in spaceships right now? Who knows? I, I always talk about the aliens and stuff like that. And I'm like, honey, it's even further than just the aliens. What is an alien? You know, and, and, and he's like, well... You know, there's so many races of humans. Well, that's true. And, and there's so, and there could be so many races of species out there. Of course, we have animals on this planet that look alien if we haven't seen them before. And then if they have intelligence and can have opposable thumbs and can press buttons and do stuff, 
then they could be flying around in spaceships and they look like, you know, a, you know, an anteater or something. That that's so I mean I, that's going way out beyond the scope of where I'm coming from. But the microbes in my opinion are the aliens. The men in black when you see all those little microbes and those little creatures that you know had intelligence the microbes the viruses which are just information that invade the parasites the protozoa the proteins the fungus and the bacteria the viruses are the programming and all the proteins with the programming then develop different species and they could look alien like if you look under a microscope so so then i was reading this Pre, this this uh, prelude to the, the, the codes of Hammurabi. And so I'm just going to read this because I, I got to read this. When Anu the sublime, the king of the Anunnaki, and Bel, the lord of heaven and earth, who decreed the fate of the land assigned to Marduk, the overruling son of Ea, god of righteousness, dominion over earthly man, and made him great among the Aijiji, they called Babylon by his illustrious name, made it great on earth, and founded an everlasting kingdom in it, whose foundation are laid so solidly as those heaven and earth. Then Anu and Bel called by name me, Hammurabi. So this is where some a man is now developing a storyline. Because Hammurabi was just a king. He was part of the dynastic, you know, part of the the first dynasty of Babylon, of the, of the, the Amorites, I think. Okay? So now this is where the storyline starts and you're going to see a million freaking offshoots of this type of storyline just so you know <clears throat> called by name me Hammurabi the exalted prince who fear God to bring about the rule of righteousness in the land to destroy the wicked and the evildoers okay so that strong should not harm the weak so that I should rule over the black-headed people like Shamash and enlighten the land to further the well-being of mankind. Hammurabi, the prince called of Bel, am I, making riches and increase enriching Nippur and Durilu beyond compare, sublime patron of Ikur, who reestablished Eridu and purified the worship of E. Apsu, who conquered the four quarters of the world, made the great name of Babylon, rejoiced the heart of Marduk, his lord who daily pays his devotions in Sagil, the royal scion, whom Sin made, who enriched Ur, the humble, the reverent, who brings wealth to Gish, Shurgal, the white king, heard of Shamash, the mighty, who gained, who again laid the foundation of Sipra, who clothed the gravestones of Malkat with green, who made Ebabar great, which is like the heavens, the warriors who guarded Larsa and renewed Ebabar with Shamash as his helper, the Lord who granted new life to Uruk, who brought plenteous water to its inhabitants, raised the head of the Iana, and perfected the beauty of Anu and Nana, shield the land who reunited the scattered inhabitants of Isin, who richly endowed Egal Mak, the protecting king of the city, brother of the gods Zamama, who firmly founded the farms of Kish, crowned Emu Te Ursag with glory, redoubled the great holy treasures of Nana, managed the temple of Harsag Kalama, the grave of the enemies, who help, whose help brought about the victory, who increased the power of Kut, Kutha, made all glorious in Ishidlam, the black steer who gored the enemy, beloved of the god Nebo, who rejoiced the inhabitants of Borsippa, the sublime who is indefatigable <laughs> for Ezida, the divine king of the city, the white wise who broadened the fields of Dilabat, who heaped up the harvest for Ursa, the mighty the Lord to whom accept her and crown with which he clothes himself, the elect of Mama who fixed the temple bound of Kesh, who made rich the holy feast of Nintu, the provident solicitous who provided food and drink of, for Lagash and Gursu, who provided large sacrificial offerings for the temple of Ningursu, who captured the enemy, the elect of the oracle, who fulfilled the prediction of Halibab, who rejoiced the heart of Anunit, the pure prince, whose prayers accepted by Adad, who satisfied the heart of Adad, the warrior in Karkar, who restored the vessels of worship in Iua Gal Gaga, the king who granted life to the city of Adab, the guide of Emok, the princely king of the city, the irresistible warrior who granted life to the inhabitants of 
Mashken Shabri, who brought abundance to the temple of Shidlam, the white potent who penetrated the, sec the secret cave of the bandits, saved the inhabitants of Malka. This is a big old run-on sentence. Of Malka from misfortune and fixed her homes fast in wealth, who established pure sacrificial gifts for Ea and Dam Golnand, who made his kingdom everlasting great, the princely king of city, who subjected the district of the Ud Kub. Oh my God. Okay, so you kind of get it. And then when you read, and so when Marduk sent me to rule over men to give the protection of right to land, I did and righteousness in and brought the well-being of the oppressed. Now, there is like a bunch of of laws and only nine of them have to do with the physicians. I only, I only put down the physician laws, but the other laws that I read were having to do with how to treat a slave. Okay? And so... Then you, it, it then stands to reason that it is credible that we were brought here and bred and reproduced to be slaves. Now, no, it's not like the 1800s, right? We've outlawed that kind of slavery. We've made slavery a little bit different, a little bit palatable, a little bit comfortable. But when you are so dependent and so in fear of a virus, of pain, of feeling uncomfortable, of change, that is what was bred into us, was that slave mentality. And then we enslave each other through that. Oh, if you don't go to work, you're not going to get paid, which I understand. And that is a way to put the fear of starvation in somebody. But you don't want to go to just that. Well, if you want to live and eat, you have to work. Now we have the baubles. We have the the trips. We have all the, the, the trappings of wealth, of like the cars and, and the clothes and the hobbies. And so now slavery is not as bad as it used to be because it's been dressed up. It's been, it's been uh, modified to be palatable. But why have slaves? Because you're building an infrastructure. Why are you building an infrastructure? Because we have to find, we have been rising and falling in civilizations for centuries trying to find the perfect utopian society with people who are peaceful, productive, innovative, and also not overly, not over consuming and over reproducing. And they haven't figured that out. The reason why is because Medicine was used cutting into people. When you actually read all of those laws, well, it's about how to treat a slave and how to deal with theft and how to keep order in society. But also, if a physician makes a large incision with the operating knife and kills a person or opens a tumor with the operating knife and cuts out the eye, his hand shall be cut off. And so when you have people back in antiquity, cutting into people, cutting out tumors and cutting out this and cutting out that. And I don't know when salt came into que came into question, even way back then, when it, I know salt was used as a cure, or maybe it wasn't, I don't fucking know. I wish I knew how salt was used way back when. I kind of know when salt was demonized because people made correlation equals causation when someone had a high blood pressure and they were eating a high sodium diet, but there's, but that's again that that's that the correlation does not equal causation. That's just one factor among many, and you can't blame the salt or the water for high blood pressure. People have have predisposed issues of a very thin blood sap vessels, and they lack water. And so, yeah, when you lack water, then you have the antidiuretic hormone pumping that hormone through to go bring up the water so you can hydrate the body. But Someone back in 1800 who made that correlation causation didn't understand the antidiuretic hormone. Now we do, but it's not, it's not out there. It's not for the mainstream consumption. People don't understand the antidiuretic hormone. They don't even know what the fuck it is. People don't even know what the hell that's in their body. And so, and so then the medical system, Rockefeller Medicine, figured out that withholding information it's far easier to control people than giving them all the information. 
I, it took me six years to research this information. This wasn't just given to me. You couldn't even buy this at medical school because if you did, you would not have as many medical students if they understood the ugly, dirty truth of antibiotics and of the surgeries and all that stuff. They have sanitized cutting into people. They have sanitized using antibiotics against people. They have sanitized that storyline so that a person who is in medical school doesn't feel unethical or immoral cutting into people <laughs> and causing rampant reproduction because the body wants to live. And so, and so, yeah, and so we have now the first real credible proof that man declares himself not only as the mouthpiece for God, but also will develop storylines. Because where did these characters that he's talking about where do they come from? Did he have his own think tank of scholars and conspirators, right? To develop a story for the ignorant. Okay? When you when you understand the elements, electricity, frequency, how to use chemistry, and then you want to have massive control over your slaves and you have a person who has no, who doesn't know anything at all except for what is told to him or her you know how easy it is to develop a religion to make somebody worship somebody to go in and 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 uh and revere and or demonize someone or something person plays her thing and so that's why i say you know you have half a chance if you can acknowledge that you have no original thought. I never had an original thought until I felt the actual difference of doing the J juice, losing the weight and, and finally finding some relief. Okay. From my PMDD and other things that were plaguing me, but that didn't end there. Then all the pain that I felt through all the different viruses, that came through that brought up my predisposed issues. That gave me original thought. The pain has given me original thought. My dreams of immortality has given me the original thought. First, you have to think about what you want in this world and then you have to go and prove it. But you also have to have an original thought around it because immortality has been used as a, as a marketing tool for those in the, the, the transhumanism world, when you're using nanotechnology or uh, metal technology to go and splice and dice and, and mess with people's immune systems. Synthetic means to keep somebody around for a certain amount of time. And so you have to go through the fucking pain to have an original thought process. If you don't go through the pain, you don't have an original thought process. You're just straight regurgitating what somebody else has said. And that's, and, and so the making of the zombies, the clones came out of Babylon. That's why you see a lot of Christians talk about Babylon, the fall of Babylon, but they don't realize they are a product of Babylon. They are just as Babylonian. And you, and you see them say, oh, this, we're in Babylon, the fall of Babylon. They're so evil. They're so this. But Christianity came out of Babylon. Because already Hammurabi deemed himself the mouthpiece for God. And then there were men that were martyred that had something to say, something to teach people understood how to how to play with the elements am i oversimplifying probably but all it takes is some dude on the street who's like 10 feet tall to walk down the street 10 11 12 feet tall and you will see everybody who is religious on my block 
be like, oh my God, that must be God or something. Or try to destroy it, either one. Either they think it's the devil or they think it's the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's how. That's where religion started is when some man wanted to control and he had, I guess he had to because people were out of control. You have to have some kind of law and order in society. But how far do you take it? And how ignorant do you keep a population? Because the more ignorant you keep a population, the more out of control because they will see a misalignment in what you say and what you do and what is going on. And they're like, oh, well, you're supposed to save people. This is where I had an issue. Oh, you know, if the medicine is supposed to save you, the hospital system and the doctors and the nurse was to save you. But why the hell did they end up in the fucking morgue in like a day, two days, a year, ten years? Oh, because it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to die. And so at some point, you have to have an educated fucking population. You cannot play this withholding of information from people because they will know in their gut something is not right. You can't play that game of, I'm going to have more knowledge than you. My mom played that fucking game. It pissed me the fuck off. And she said, oh yeah, go write your grievances. I don't want to hear you say anything, but write your grievances. And I don't have a command of the English language. Like she did. She's an English major, as well as a mental health professional with a Juris Doctor. And so I'm sure she was laughing at my very two, 5, 10, 11, 12-year-old way of expressing myself. Fuck that. So I didn't say fuck. I don't know what the hell I said. She was probably laughing. Of course she was. And so that's why you have to chase after fucking information, people. Because the more ignorant you are, the more you're going to be enslaved, compromised. And so when you see the influencers on YouTube or on TV, they're actually the ones that are enslaved and jailed. The ones that, that look so beautiful, so perfect. And everyone is giving them accolades and following them and, and hanging on their every word. And so they're being exploited. You know they are. Like the Kardashians, they're enslaved because if they ever get out of character, people will think something is wrong with them. They won't have as much of the accolades and the adoration and, and be then paid a lot of money to influence so many different people. And so when you think about it, when you face the pain and you chase after information like it's water and you develop your own fucking thought process, you will set your ass free from Babylon the Christians need to understand this, but they don't. Believe me, I've tried to get the Christians to figure out, you guys are the ones that are being enslaved. You guys are the product of Babylon. You are Babylon. The only way you're going to get out of that enslavement is if you finally develop your own thought process. You finally get away from looping in the same scripture, the same old words, the old texts, the old ways, the old intolerance, and you start developing another fucking script. But you know that's not going to happen. Believe me, I know that the government has tried to quell the extremists in religions. And they can't go back to the Cultural Revolution or World War II. So what do you do? You raise the frequencies. So I completely understand what is going on in this New World Order. I completely get it, though many don't, because the pain of becoming whole again is so fierce for some people that they are going to go rabid on the way out the door. Because I know how much I was tortured this last three weeks from my own predisposed issues. My husband only felt half of that. That's what he, So he got over it. So right now he, he was in pain. But remember, he took the NyQuil. So he didn't really understand the pain. The pain didn't work to his benefit. Will the next time around he get sick? Will that? We'll see. But he might take another fucking thing in NyQuil and keep taking himself further and further and further behind the eight ball. And so I always give you another way of thinking. It's when you know why you're experiencing pain that you mean to experience the pain, not from somebody hurting you and stabbing you or doing anything 
to 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 penetrate anything in your body but you deal with your own demons inside the pulsing headaches you drink water you eat food you go to sleep you get the poop out if you can't even poop because your system is just like not even moving but if you can't even do that because you're not eating a lot but you are drinking enough then you sleep and you blow your nose and that is going to tell you everything you need to know about the world you live in everything everything and you can imagine how many people are at such extreme deficit they are enslaved getting all the vectors the therapies the prescription drugs the illicit drugs the alcohol whatever addictions they have their hormones the love 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 or the hate 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 or the anxiety or the depression that's why we're in a great reset because we have taken medicine way too far we have taken bioengineering way too fucking far and so now it's time to clean the petri dish and so yeah the rosicrucians understand what's going on they're still repeating the same mistakes but not really i think they're meaning to promote vast amounts of antibiotics on people who can't deal with their predisposed issues who are at such deficit and so it's kind of like being merc being merciful for those who are at such deficit trying to find the most strongest antibiotic without killing them but you know that even finding that FDA approved antibiotic that doesn't outright destroy them will destroy them over time and usually will, it will actually happen faster in a dynamic environment and so it is kind of like that back and forth of holy shit but what do you do when you see somebody with a child who wants to have a child the person has predisposed issues they it's a high risk pregnancy you know that kid and that person are going to be tortured by the viruses, by their predisposed issues, by the craziness of our economy and the climate change. And and you just you just you just you can't do anything. Even if you said something, they're going to tell you you're stupid. Because they have been so programmed to follow that formula. You go to school, you graduate high school, you go to college or a trade school, you find a boyfriend, you get married, you have 2.5 kids, a white picket fence. And people are blindly falling into that. But then they realize the partners that they pick have so many fucking issues, addictions and violence issues and alcoholism and and people divorce. They get separated, they divorce. That, that whole dream of, of, of having the white picket fence and the 2.5 kids and a nuclear family is now disintegrating because of all the predisposed issues, because of all the antibiotics being used. And so now people are just left to going like, what happened to the American dream? What happened to the family dream? What happened to everything that we were told in order to be a good person, you follow this formula? You can be such a good person and mean well and, and do it all right and then your kids turn out to be fucked up. Your husband or your wife turn out to be violent, addictive, abusive. And you're like, what the fuck happened? And people stick their head in the sands and they go deeper and deeper into their addictions because they can't face the reality that they were, that the world has changed. And, and that's what's so like, holy shit. And I'm watching on Facebook. People have been people have been together for you know since two thousand five, and now they're getting a divorce. I already saw that there was issues in 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 that in that marriage and in that relationships right at the get go. Rampant use of cannabis use, a lot of fighting, all that stuff, and I and I was amazed they even lasted this long. But remember, people are so programmed to get married, have a bunch of kids, and then feed them into the medical holistic system when things don't go right and they wonder why there's issues in relationships he said yeah nowadays you know some some guys they just have a slew of girls that are dying to get married but they know but they're, they're, the guy guy's not ready to get married 
he won't get married. There's no reason for him to get married. When he has five girls, ten girls, some, you know, cleaning their house. He has sex with them every so often. They buy him stuff. No, there's, there's... Nowadays, it's lucrative for a guy not to get married, not to be saddled to some emotional mess. If you're going to get married, it's a business arrangement. Yes, there's love and respect, but it's a fucking business arrangement. You have to know what the other person needs and what you need and what do you have to bring to the table? What do they have to bring to the table? And how are you going to sustain and maintain a financial, equitable type of situation? If you can't be strategic in your life, how the fuck are you going to be strategic in your marriage? Because marriage is strategy. It's not easy. And so, yeah, so we're going to see a lot of interesting things from this point forward. But, I'd, but I'll just say this. I'm just going to end with this because I need to write. What am I going to say? They really have nothing to say. I have nothing to end with. I, there's nothing really to say because I really can't tell someone to stop believing in their politics and their religion and their scientific dogmas. You can't tell them. You can't tell anyone to stop believing in their religion. When I'm watching on my Facebook, people are going to the churches or bringing their kids to the church. A lot of them have health issues. The people that are going to these churches have major health issues. Major. Major obesity. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of mental issues. And so, and so then it's becoming tolerant. Pointing out. Pointing out the logic of why people turn to religion politics and scientific dogmas and then say okay there is very limited knowledge and intellect when you are adopting the religion of politics and science and religion holistic and allopathic there's very limited intellect very limited independent thinking hardly any innovation when you think about it because what Mark Zuckerberg and and some of these people that came out of the tech industry, they went to Stanford. They went to, to Yale and Harvard. And they were given the framework of what, of what they want to see in the future. And then they all put it together. If, if, if uh, Bill Gates didn't have a little bit of this college background, he wouldn't have developed Microsoft. And so actually facing the pain, so I do this, I'm going to say, facing the pain will not only increase your intellect, but it will strengthen you. You keep taking something for the pain, whether it's J juice or something to stop the pain, whether it's a, a holistic remedy or an allopathic remedy, you are dumbing yourself down. You are actually decreasing your intellect. You are then turning into a zombie. That's what I need to get across to every single person on my Facebook that is exploring the JJ meta mentality. Every single antibiotic, every single remedy, every single cure, every single anything that you use to assuage any of your feelings, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sex, or any other addiction where you're trying to run away from your pain, it will dumb you down. It will decrease your intellect. It will make you so much like a zombie and also intolerant. So if you want to increase your intellect, you have to face the pain. And then you realize that you are the God. There's no reason to turn to a religion. There's no reason to worship any politician, any Hollywood star. There's no reason to 
be so biased in your science, scientific belief systems that you learn, you understand both sides of it. If they say you're supposed to die, then the opposite is also fucking true. You're supposed to live. So then what the hell? Because science, you can look at both sides and both sides are equally credible. When you go into the politics and the religion allegory, you will get lost in the rabbit holes. But you have to understand first science, both sides of science, and then you can see where the religion came in. Then you can see those who have dubbed themselves the exalted ones and developed a script, a scripture, a storyline, a fucking playwright like Shakespeare to then guide a population. But those who are so heavily into their politics, religion, and scientific dogmas, they do lack extreme amounts of independent intelligence. It's straight up regurgitation for them. And so that's where I will be a little bit uh, judgmental, I guess, offensive. Because how many people on my Facebook are heavily into their Christianity, their Jew Judaism, Muslim, Islam? Many. But I'm not looking for popularity. I'm looking to increase the intelligence of humanity, not keep reproducing the same clones from way back in the days of Babylon. It's time for us to evolve humans. Bye.